Hello, my name is Sandy and I am a professional teacher with italki. This is the fourth in a series of learning vocabulary videos by context. And learning in context gives you uh, an ability to understand the meaning of the vocabulary and how it's actually used in conversation and being able to ingest it into your memory and being able to use it effectively yourself. Over the years, I have also taught many students to uh, prepare themselves for interviews, for internships, uh, in, uh, university interviews, etc., as well as business English to students and senior management, working in addition with public street speaking and giving uh, good presentations is all the strengths that I help people with their English skills. So as I said, this is the fourth in the series. There's going to be six parts in this series, which will have over 60 various forms of vocabulary that will be absolutely perfect if you're planning on taking one of the IELTS uh, or the TOEFL examinations. Um, they're very, they go from um, sort of basic standard vocabulary up to semi-complex and vocabulary that will impress examiners on the day that you use. And the big thing is they're going to be very easy for you to get into using them and being able to adapt them to the various particular aspects that you will need to use them in, in these tests, mainly writing, speaking. Um, that's where they're mainly effective for the production skills being tested. So let's now go and take a look at the today's selection of useful vocabulary. And if you want to follow this up, you know, I will be bringing in after this, this, this sixth series in this, I will be bringing in some grammar videos that will be the the gel, the glue that brings all these this vocabulary together to turn you into a, a fluent and uh, impressive speaker of English. So I do suggest that you consider uh, subscribing, liking and ringing the bell. And that way you'll be get fully informed as these videos come online. So let's go and let's get started. Okay, just before we get started, let me just remind you of the way I recommend that we learn these words, that we, how we ingest them into our memory, um, is by using flashcards, writing the, the vocabulary down in the front of the flashcard along with its definition and then constructing two or three sentences on the rear of the card that when you're looking at them will remind you of how you can use them easily in your own idea. And uh, that way you will get, get these into your uh, active memory as quickly as you possible. Um, as I say, Take your flashcards out and sort of regularly check them, look at them, learn them, etc. And you'll pick up the words pretty quickly. So anyway, the first word today is application. And this is a word that we use in several, several ways. Similar meanings, uh, you could be applying for a job in an application form, etc. But today we're talking about the use or implement, implementation of something. Very typical is the, the apps for your phone. They're all applications for your telephone or your computers, etc. Um, so you know what, what application means there. The, the example I've given here is the application of new technology has greatly improved our production process. So there we are, application. So moving on to the word authentic. Authentic. This is an, a very good word that could be used in many applications. Authentic. Is this real? Is it genuine? Is it not copied? Is it not false? Uh, it's authentic. The example I'm giving here is the painting, the painting was deemed authentic by a team of art experts. So it was considered real and original. Consistent. Are we being consistent? We require consistency. So what does it mean? In agreement or accord with something. Always behaving in the same way. It's being consistent. They are acting consistently. 
The example, her work has always been consistent in terms of quality and style. Excellent. Okay, critique, critique. A little bit difficult for some people to say perhaps. Have you ever looked at something and been critical? Have you criticized it? Have you given your critique? Which is a detailed analy analysis or assessment of something often highlighting its strengths and or weaknesses. Critique, the example here is excellent. The film received mixed critiques from critics, those that give critiques, with some praising it and others criticizing it heavily. So, a perfect example there. So our next word is depict, depict, to represent or show something in a particular way. The painting depicts a scene from a medieval castle. Wow, the painting depicts a scene from a medieval castle. The painting is depicting a scene from a medieval castle. Depicting. Okay, to describe, describe, to give an account in words of something or someone, including its appearance, nature and characteristics. The example here is, can you describe the suspect's appearance to us? Can you give us a description of the suspect? Who are you describing to them? So there are many words that you can use from describe and it's a very easy one. The, the passage describes what the person was thinking. Okay, to evaluate, to evaluate, to assess or judge the value, quality or importance of something. To assess or judge the value, quality or importance of something, evaluate evaluation so another another one to add to your collection examine examine a fairly simple piece of vocabulary but it can be adapted to many many aspects very easily examine to inspect investigate or scrutinize something in detail examine examination the examiner very easy to adapt. The doctor examined the patient thoroughly to determine the cause of his symptoms. He gave him an examination. So, exactly as we do in our tests, we, exam we give people examination, we examine them. So, good. Implication, implication. Another excellent word that can be adapted many ways in your writing or your speaking. It was implied. He was implying. Are you implying? She was implying. It was implica He was implicated in this action. Implication, a conclusion that can be drawn from something, often something that is not explicitly stated. So, implication. The implication of his statement was that he did not trust the company's management. Another absolutely excellent word that would impress various examiners in the test or you could use it to exa to impress people when you're talking. So another one to put down and put it into your active memory. And I'm just going to explain a little bit more about that before we close here. When I talk about putting it into your active memory, your active memory is the memory that you can use easily to, to take out vocabulary and use it effectively in your conversation. Your passive memory possibly contains much more vocabulary than your active memory. It, in it contains vocabulary that you've got a good idea what it means and you know if people use it you will understand it, but you will find it difficult to use yourself easily in any conversation or writing etc. So that's your passive, your passive memory and your passive vocabulary that you, you've got a good idea about etc. But it's not effective like your active vocabulary, the things that you can pull out right away and use them effectively and impress others. So that's the last of today's words.
So there you are, my friends. Another 10 words to put into your active memory and put it away here for use in the future. So get it on your flashcard. R review it regularly. See the meaning and get it ingested into your mind. You're going in the right direction if you're doing that. So thank you for watching. As, uh, I hope this is hopeful. It is helpful for you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.